Hello and welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to the vlog. Welcome back to Cornwall. Welcome back to summer. Yeah, it is June. It is summer. It's 24 degrees Celsius outside. It's a little warm, but in the car it is a reasonable 19 degrees because we have climate control. Something, something that my old motorcycle did not have. And on a day like today, well, it was fun to be out on a motorcycle. It was always a good time to be out on a motorcycle, but you would get hot with your helmet and your jacket and your rover trousers and your armor. It was, um, it was a warm but fast experience. But that's not what I wanted to talk about today. What I wanted to talk about was the channel because I was thinking, as you do when you are just sort of standing in the shower going, hmm, things to think about. And I was thinking about pigeonholing of all things. Now, anyone who's worked in an office, most people who've worked in an office, some people who've worked in an office might know what a pigeonhole is, often called a cubby or also called a cubby. It is a place where your post gets uh, put. Uh, so if you have a, like a staff room or a recreation room or some sort of room that isn't an office, you'll have a line of cubbies or pigeonholes and your post gets put in them and your post will ever only ever get put into one pigeonhole. If, however, you are a, a Hollywood actor and you do a film, say you do a, a horror film, you might get pigeonholed as a horror film actor so that all the other offers that you ever get throughout the rest of your career are horror-themed uh, roles. Uh, there was a problem with people appearing as main cast on Star Trek and they were like, I don't want to be pigeonholed as a sci-fi actor. But sometimes they did. That was the cost of being a main actor on Star Trek. Also 16 hour days, because if, you, if you're working on Star Trek, those are long days. But as far as the channel goes, as far as YouTube goes, being pigeonholed is similar, slightly different because of the nature of the media, but similar. So around 2016, um, I took what was Wild Slice Project because the channel was called Wild Slice Project which was uh, a group of people, a group of friends that was me, Nick, James, uh, my brother Alex, uh, Chantal uh, helped out. Um, there was another guy who appeared in, uh, well we, we tried recording a video right at the beginning like as a test and then but that guy was just like I'm going to peace out, yo see ya. Uh, and that's what they did, so uh, that would have been Raf, and he, he was never on it. Um, we did have an Alan from time to time, so Alan was around. Um, but the thing is that uh, we kind of did a bit of Minecraft, a bit of this, a bit of that. But in 2016, everyone had gone to do Twitch or uh, their own projects, and I was like, okay, cool, I'll just, I'll take over the YouTube channel then. And picked up Stranded Deep. Stranded Deep, a survival game. And now it might, might come as a shock to some people, but survival games are not the games that I would normally play if I was by myself. No, if I was by myself, I would normally play first person shooters because your boy happens to be quite good at doing first person shooty stuff. Uh, I was very big into Unreal Tournament, UT99. Uh, Unreal Tournament, was a huge part of my life, especially when I worked in an internet cafe. Does anyone remember internet cafes? Because I sure do. Uh, yeah, we had, oh God, the internet cafe I worked in had an ISDN line. It didn't even have DSL, it had ISDN, and it had um, an area for LAN. So we had, a, we had an internal LAN set up. And if you wanted to play a game on the internet, only one of the machines, and one of the gaming machines had like full internet access. And that machine, well, you had, you'd get 128 kilobits, not megabits, kilobits per second, assuming the internet cafe was empty. As soon as the customer came in and started looking at their emails, that would drop, but then you were serving the customer at that point. So yeah, horses for courses. Um, but yeah, I used to play a lot of first-person shooters and RTS games, real-time strategy. Real-time strategy was a big thing with me. I really did like the old uh, RTS games. So Age of Empires, AOE 2, things like that. I'd spend an awful lot of time playing them. But they are not 
interesting games when it comes to things like YouTube. When it comes to things like YouTube, you really want to get in on the story games or the more creative games. So um, I kind of picked Stranded Deep, a survival game, mostly because I saw somebody else playing. I saw James play it um, way back when the world in the game was infinite. You could go infinitely from one island to another. I think that was the pre-release version 0.04. There was a floor to the world, so if you jumped off of your raft, because it's a, um, a Pacifica survival game, if you jumped off of your raft, you would end up uh, like 10 meters below would be a sea floor. And you would probably have a tiger shark swimming around and doing stuff down there. Um, so, around 2016 I picked that up, and then a little later on I picked up The Long Dark because it was another survival game and it kind of interested me at the time. But in the back of my mind I was doing The Long Dark and Stranded Deep videos uh, every week. And those were the kind of the main things that were happening on the channel. The trouble is, it's very easy to get pigeonholed to say a Minecraft channel or um, a Battlefield channel or a survival game channel. And I'm just like, hmm, but I like all games. I just, I don't want to be pigeonholed. So, um, when it came to uh, the channel, like recent channel, I've been making sure to mix things up. So we have uh, Stranded Deep, which is your survival. And then we have a story adventure game. So we've had Tomb Raider, we've had Alice Madness Returns, and we are doing God of War, the, the remake God of War with Christopher Judge, which is has been actually really interesting. There is a really decent story in that game. It's been rather, rather fun to play. It might not get as many views as Stranded Deep gets. It certainly doesn't get as many views as Stranded Deep gets, but God of War is important. It's important to have it there so that people don't just assume that we do only survival games. The other thing uh, that we've been doing are horror games in the so, so, sort of supermassive games and supermassive story games. Now, it might also be a surprise and a shock for you to find out that I'm not big on to uh, big in. I don't. Bleh. Apparently, I need more blood sugar. Um, yeah, I'm not big on horror games. Horror games don't scare me. I don't get shocked or surprised that easily because I know it's a game. My brain's like, this is a game. You can see all the triggers, all the invisible triggers and all the invisible like uh, paths and pathing and things. They're just not that scary. But super massive games are different. They are horror games. But they're very, very deep in the story uh, side of things. And I really do like that story and I like that character interaction. The horror is just icing on an already detailed and very interesting cake. So that's, that, that's why we've been doing Supermassive games. I'm not likely to do more horror games um, unless there is like a deep story there or is there something that will super interest, like really, really interesting. Um, what I'm likely to do is just trawl around and see if I can find other games, other genres that are very interesting. And I did find one in Disco Elysium. So I talked about it last week. And that is, uh, that is an RPG. It is not an adventure RPG. It is a dialogue heavy RPG in the same vein as Planescape Torment. Planescape Torment, I do apparently have a copy of on um, ooh, Amazon Gaming because it's currently like a free uh, a free game on Twitch if you have a Twitch subscription so you can grab Planescape Torment but Disco Elysium is, is very much in the same vein there are very deep dialogue trees and on the combat it's done through dialogue it's uh, there we go it is um, it's not complicated and some of the dialogue options, you can kind of see what the outcome is going to be. But it is very detailed, hugely detailed. You're dropped into a world that's similar to ours. And there are things that are just different, odd, weird, and 
slightly broken and there is a huge, huge supernatural element to the world of Disco Elysium which is slowly revealed to you as you play. Uh, and you are playing a police officer who is essentially trying to solve uh, a murder but you've lost your memory. You have lost all memory of who you are, where you came from, and anything that happened in the past. You are completely donezo in terms of your brain. So, see, nothing is that way. Good. And as you, the player, are learning about the world, your character is also learning about the world. And it's, it's really well done. I've done two videos so far. One is currently up on the channel and the other one is uploading as we speak because it's a two hour video and when we got to the last supermassive game which was Little Hope I found that I had time to do one long form video a week and I figured that would be it. Disco Elysium would be it. So we're going to be doing that for a while. Um, two hour videos have to be recorded in chunks so every now and again you might see a crash cut in the video and uh, that's because you can't just drop two hours of footage into Adobe Premiere. Uh, Premiere would just not like that and take a very long time to encode your video. If you break it up into smaller sections then what happens is uh, Premiere is a lot happier. It still takes a long time to render, you still want to render overnight but it's going to take a, a heck of a long time to do that. Um, so yeah, we, you get one video. Oh, Jesus! <laughs> that was a hell of a drop. We're not even going that fast. I could see the dip in the road and I was just like, hmm, oh well, we're committed. If you, uh, if you see something in the road and you think, oh no, don't slam on the brakes because it can cause problems but the car is big enough and strong enough to look after itself. Uh, good. So yeah, we could do one two hour video a week. A two hour video in comparison to something like Stranded Deep, that's about two weeks of footage because you do half hour footage. You get one hour of Stranded Deep a week. Um, but wait, there's more. Yeah, so I was thinking about these long form videos and how that I'm not currently doing, uh, not currently doing streaming. And the thing about streaming is that it's great, you get a lot more engagement, on the spot engagement, but not everyone can get there because of geographical reasons. Someone in America might not want to get to your 6 o'clock GMT stream and will miss out, or just miss out. So these long form videos are essentially kind of your, uh, kind of a stream for you guys who could never get to a stream, sort of all the Americans and people in different parts of the world. Uh, we should be clear. We are clear. So yeah, it's like a stream without having a stream, but it does mean that engagement is slightly different on the very long videos. The very long videos, um, you tend to find people will watch a few minutes, stop, go away, and then watch later on. So the view count, is never going to go up very quickly on a long form video. Uh, certainly not as quickly as a Stranded Deep video. Speaking of Stranded Deep, uh, we're currently back in the map editor. So we're currently editing maps, um, which is, I always worry when we jump into the map editor that because we spend an awful lot of time luxuriating in making custom island, custom world, that people might get a little bit tired of it towards the end of the production. Um, I did do a search for the channel some, while, uh, some time ago. So I just typed in Overdrive Theatre into the Googs and just saw what came up. Because it's, it's good to search for yourself, see what your SEO is doing, <clears throat> your search engine optimization. And I found a post on the Stranded Deep subreddit because somebody was asking about how do you make a cave in the Stranded Deep map maker. And somebody else went, oh, look at this guy's work on Overdrive Theatre. He does these videos on how to make maps. They're very, they're very useful. And I was like, oh, that's great. I didn't respond to it, but I just read it and I was just like, yeah, that's, that's lovely that somebody found that and shared it with somebody else. So that's good. 
Um, so yeah, we're back in the map maker, and it does take a long time because if you are making an island and you're assuming other people are going to use it, or you're going to make a map for a video game, and you're going to assume other people are going to use it, it's all very well adding the big things, adding the huge shipwrecks or cliffs or like sweeping vistas, but if there's no pathways for the player to walk around, if there's no resources for the players to go to, if you don't work out how people are going to use the map, where they're going to go beyond their first five minutes in your world, then um, you've got a problem. So as we put resources and things onto our custom island, we're going to put them in a such way that it encourages people who've been playing for five minutes on our custom island, or five hours, or five days, or for even five months, to walk around the whole island, and not to block the player, and to actually just, you know, um, have a fun experience for someone. Which is interesting. So yeah, that's currently what we're doing on the channel. Disco Elysium, uh, Stranded Deep, so an RPG, uh, a survival game, well we're actually making maps, so we're making part of the game, within the game, and we're doing an action adventure game, and we're also doing a vlog. So I'm quite happy with the stuff that's going out, hopefully we don't get pigeonholed, uh, people don't come to the channel and go, I want you to do this, because I want to do everything. Everything that's interesting. And you might say, have you ever abandoned a game because you, got, you found it was too boring? Yeah, Resident Evil 6, I think it was. The one with the family, and they were eating the goo, and the, the, it was made for VR, so your wife got possessed and kept running at the monitor. I kind of stopped playing that because it just didn't interest me. The controls were bad, the, the way the camera felt was bad, uh, the story wasn't great. Uh, and my cat died at the time, around that time, and I was just like, you know what, I'm not feeling this, and I just stopped. Never went back. Did consider going back, but I was just like, the game is just not that interesting. So it's okay if you are doing a channel of your own, and you're just not having fun, and you can abandon the game. You can, you can abandon something that you're just not interested in. It is okay. Do not worry. Um, are you letting anyone down? I mean... If anyone desperately wanted something, I, f I find that they would probably say something in the comments. And that's what the comments are for, interacting with me. And I will respond if I can, if I can understand what you've written. Uh, anyway, I'm going to leave it there for the time being. Good vlog, good vlog. So, uh, if you like these vlogs, definitely leave a little like, leave a subscribe. If you do subscribe, consider dingling the bingle. If you want notifications, don't click the bell if you don't want notifications. And I tell you what, I'll catch you next time.